Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Varadari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Varadari Ya Sodanandana Braja Jana Randana Ya Sodanandana Braja Jana Randana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Bala Giri Varadari Ya Sodanandana Braja Jana Randana Ya Sodanandana Braja Jana Randana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jai Om Vishnupad, Paramahamsa, Parivrajikacharya, Asatara Sadashri Srimad, Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Maharaj, Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan Founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Anantakoti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai, Namacharya, Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Shikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopina Shai Mukunda Radha Kunda Giddy Govardhan Ki Jai Vrinda Vandama Ki Jai Mathura Dhamma Ki Jai Nabhadrit Mayapur Dhamma Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dhamma Ki Jai Gangamay Jamuna Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanande All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Garanga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Patarane Nivasesa Sunyavadi Paskatya Desha Tarane. Vande Ham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha. Shri Rupam Sagraja Tam Sahakana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvoitam Sadvadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vachakam Vitam Shcha Vanchakapa Chubhishcha Kripa Sindhubhya Bhattapati Chanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavayva Namo Namaha Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So it's July 11, 2022 in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 37, Text 24. Sri Sukha Uvacha Evam Yarupatim Krishnam Bhagavata Pavaro Munihi Pranipatya Yanuganto Yayota Darshanotsava 
Sri Sukha Uvacha, Sukadev Goswami said, Evam, thus, Yadupatim, to the chief of the Yadus, Krishnam, Lord Krishna, Bhagavata, of devotees, Pravara, most eminent, Munihi, the sage Narada, Pranipatya, respectfully bowing down, Abhyanugnataha, given leave, in other words, given permission to go, Yayo, went, Tat, him, Krishna, Darshana, by having seen, Utsava, experiencing great joy, of course, Utsaha also means a festival, right? enthusiasm, festival. BBT translation, Sukadev Goswami said, having thus addressed Lord Krishna, the chief of the Yadu dynasty, Narada bowed down and offered him obeisances. Then that great sage and most eminent devotee took his leave from the Lord and went away feeling great joy at having directly seen him. Uh, Prabhupada translates that as Krishna gave him permission to leave. So going to Sanatan Goswami. There's no BBT commentary going to Sanatan Goswami's Tika. Since he was the lord of the Yadus, he must protect them. So this is the Yadu Patim. He was Krishna, who was attracted affectionately to the devotees. So Sanatan Goswami is breaking this up, Yadu Patim and Krishna. Thus Krishna did not hate Narada for informing him of the events. Why, why might he have hated him? As he's sending him to his death. Wow, okay, why else might Krishna have hated Narada? Okay, he, he was, a, what do they call that, a spoiler? Yeah, he gave him the spoilers, spoiled the story. Okay, why else might Krishna hate him? What's he trying to induce Krishna to do? Go to Mathura, leave Vrindavan. Okay, but he doesn't hate him because... Narada says, Yadupatim, you're the protector of the Yadus. Narada is again called the best of the devotees. What's that, what's that word here? Bhagavata, what is it? Bhagavata Pravaro. Right. So Narada is again called the best of the devotees, so Parikit wouldn't hate him. So why might Parikit hate Narada? For all these reasons, right? All the same reasons that Krishna might hate him. So therefore, Sugadev Goswami is saying, he's the best of the devotees. Or Narada offered respects because Krishna was Bhagavan. So this could be understood as referring to Narada, that Narada is the best of the devotees, or it could be referring to the best Muni offers respects to Bhagavan. Though he was lord of the Yadus, he was the joy of Gokula, Krishna. So here again is separating Yadupati from Krishnam. You're the protector of the Yadus, and yet you're also the joy of Gokula as Krishna. So you're both. For these reasons, Narada offered respect. So Narada offered respects because Krishna is Bhagavan, because he's the lord of the Yadus, and because he is the joy of Gokula. He was joyful on seeing Krishna. What's the word here? Joyful on seeing Krishna. The whole thing. Darshan Utsaha, right? Which becomes Darshan Utsava. The A ah and the U become O. He was joyful on seeing Krishna. Even then he departed. So this is a, interesting. If I'm really happy to see you, why would I leave? Right? Hi, it's wonderful to see you. I'm going. Right? Why? This is always very good answer. He was sent off by Krishna. Abhyanu Gnataha. Or he departed fearlessly, Abhi, after offering respects which made him fearless. So he left because Krishna ordered him to, or he left because he's always going places because he's fearless. As is interesting, Abhi, Abhi means going towards. And, like uh, you know, Arjuna has his son, Abhimanyu. So Manyu means anger or danger. Abhimanyu means going toward danger. 
Of all the Varnas, there's only one that goes toward danger. Who's that? Satrias. Right? If, there, if a house is burning down, do you go into the house? Only if you're a firefighter, right? Firefighter goes into the burning building. Or there's some crazy person shooting. Everybody runs away, except the police officers. They're supposed to, anyway, if they're real Satrias. They're supposed to go toward the shooter, Yes? So Narada is also, I mean, he's not a Kshatriya, obviously, but he's also going toward difficulty, isn't he? He's just got this fearlessness. Since Narada was a great devotee, why did he not pray to stay in Vraja? This question may be asked. He knew, Munihi, that by living there at that time, he would commit an offense by obstructing the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis in Vraja. So here Sanatana Goswami is getting into a deeper meaning of the word Muni that he, he understands, this is not my place. I don't belong here. Or he understood that the people of Raja would curse him after understanding that he had come there to advise Krishna to go to Mathura. So either way, he was very intelligent. He was a Muni. He understood, I'm going to interfere with the Lord's pastimes or the devotees are going to be really angry with me. <laughs> right? Uh, who were the devotees really angry with about Krishna going to Mathura? Akura. Right? And Nara didn't want to end up in the same boat as a Kura. So uh, we're going to go to Jiva Goswami's commentary. Vishnu Chakravati Dakura does not have a commentary on this verse. So Jiva Goswami, since Krishna did not want to leave Gokula, he did not directly accept what Narada said. However, by mentioning the word Yadu Patim, master of the Yadus, it is suggested that he accepted. So this was Narada convincing Krishna. Narada offered respects to the ground because he was the best of devotees. He knew the intention of the Lord. However, in Dwarka, among crowds of people, Krishna offered respects to him. He does not act in any other way towards Narada. So here privately in Vrindavan, Narada is offering respects to Krishna. Publicly in Dwarka, Krishna is offering respects to Narada. Joyful at seeing Krishna, he departed. Why? He was sent off by Krishna. So even though he was joyful at seeing him, Krishna ordered him to leave. Sri Sukha Uvacha Evam Yadupatim Krishnam Bhagavata Pavaro Munihi Panipat Yad Yanu Jato Yayota Darshanot Sava. Sukadev Goswami said, having thus addressed Lord Krishna, the chief of the Yadu dynasty, Narada bowed down and offered him obeisances. Then that great sage and most eminent devotee took his leave from the Lord and went away, feeling great joy at having directly seen him. So that's interesting, feeling joy at having in the past, uh, whereas one could understand this, that he was joyful on seeing Krishna and yet he left. So we have some uh, kind of paradoxical juxtapositions going on here. We have, do the devotees like Narada offer obeisances to Krishna or does Krishna offer obeisances to the devotees? And is Krishna the leader of the Yadus or is he an affectionate cowherd? And do we take joy at seeing Krishna or do we leave? We have these sort of interesting juxtapositions. So who offers respects to whom? Now, in every society, there is some understanding of social status and people act accordingly. In every society, you really need to know very, very quickly something about the status of the person you are speaking to or dealing with because that will change how you deal with them, isn't it? Right? Like nowadays often you can't tell what gender somebody is. And I remember years ago I was in London, I was buying some soap, and I was in a shop and I couldn't tell whether the person attending me was male or female. And I couldn't tell by the name. It was sort of a, a gender-neutral name. I just couldn't tell. Is this a very young male or is it a female? And when I left the store, I thought, well, why? what did it matter? I was just buying some soap. And then I realized I'm going to behave differently. I'm going to behave differently with another female than I'm going to behave with a male. You know? And it's the same with age, right? how old somebody is. So I can, you can usually have a pretty good idea, am I dealing with a very young person or someone in full life or a middle-aged person or an older? Why? Because you deal differently with them, isn't it? Right? And often you can tell very quickly 
somebody's cultural background or ethnicity. Of course, that's starting to dissipate. And again, you're going to deal a little differently with people because people in different cultures have different ways of acting. Isn't that a fact? Right? Well, I think it's that you notice something. You notice something. Because uh, just like I was at the doctor's the other day and one of the nurses is from Ghana. And so they have a different cultural way of acting than people who've been brought up in America. And I'm going to deal with them a little differently, at least you should, <laughs> right? And the same with social status. You know, does it, is a person on a, a higher rung of the social ladder or a lower rung of the social ladder? It depends. It will change how you treat them. People who are very famous, very rich, very powerful, they're used to be, they're accustomed to be treated with some deference. And if you don't do that, they'll become offended. So in every human society, there's, there's these markers of these things, yes? How people dress, how they speak, how they comport themselves, and their physical appearance gives us some idea of how to deal with them. And of course, in every culture, we deal with status a little differently. Like in America, we pretend that there's no such thing. We, we, we have this kind of pretense that there is no such thing as social status. But in other countries, it's, it's very obvious. Like in Indonesia, they have, they, when they send you an email, they put all the letters of their degrees and stuff after their name in every email. <laughs> and I was like, why do they do this? Because they're signaling their status. So again, as Americans, we may not be, those of us who have been brought up in America, we may not think this is so important, but it actually is in our social dealings. And as I've said before, we're... We're social creatures. We're, we're herd animals. We're not loner animals. And in a social situation, how you deal with people matters. You know, like horses have their social hierarchy. Cows have their social hierarchy. And if you don't, when they call the cows into the barn, they come in order by social status. Did you all know that? And if the cow gets out of their order, they'll be headbutted by the other cows. Uh, so this factor exists even spiritually. There's different levels of status, right? I mean, there just there is. There's different groups of cows in the spiritual world, and there's a chief cow, and Krishna calls the chief cow. And there's uh, Rupa Goswami describes all the different levels of the groups of gopis in Ujjwala Nilamani. And the, each group of gopis has a chief gopi, and then that chief gopi has her chief friends, and then she has her next level friends, and then they have their assistant friends. And this is true with the cowherd boys too. There's very intimate cowherd boys, and then there's just friends, and then there's friends who are more like servants, yes? And everyone is acting accordingly. Like we, we read about how when Krishna is having breakfast in the morning, that he and the cowherd boys are all just goofing around. But in the evening when Nandamarj is there, then they're more restrained. Because, you know, my father's here. I have to be more restrained. Uh, so these things mean something, even in a society like America, where we want to pretend that they don't mean anything. Uh, they do. And so does, is Krishna going to offer respects to Narada, or is Narada offered, going to offer respects to Krishna? Well, this depends on whether you're thinking that Krishna is a Kshatriya and Narada is a Brahmana, or whether you're thinking that Krishna is God and Narada is a devotee. Yes? So, depending on the situation, in some situations, Krishna acts like, well, I'm a Kshatriya, or I'm a Vaisha, and therefore I'm offering respects to a Brahmana. And in Dwarka, generally, Krishna is doing this. Krishna is acting like I'm a Kshatriya, and I'm offering respects if Narada Muni comes, or the Brahmins come, I'm offering respects to the Brahmanas. But even sometimes in Dwarka, the Brahmanas will offer respect to Krishna, and Krishna will accept that. Right? In our social dealings, if someone of a higher status offers respect to us when we're of a lower status, we say, no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. Don't offer respects to me. I'm, I'm your junior. Right? I sometimes have this problem in the Hare Krishna movement that I'll offer obeisances to someone and they'll say, oh, you can't offer obeisances to me. I'm your junior. And I said, well, I don't. Rupa Goswami says you have to offer obeisances to anyone who has diksha. So <laughs> I just have to. But sometimes it's a little... Awkward. Now this, 
situation, I've mentioned this before, it bewildered someone named Sudakshina. So it was what's mentioned in the previous verse when Narada Muni was listing all the things that Krishna would do. He said, you're going to kill Pandraka. So you all know the story of Pandraka. Pandraka thought he was Vishnu, but it was like those old cheap Indian movies where he just had the fake arms. <laughs> Imagine to having to stick on two fake arms and you still you think you're God. Anyway, so he was somehow convinced. He was God. His followers were convinced. And he sent this messenger to Krishna. Right? And everybody was laughing at this messenger. And Pondraka was backed up by the king of Kashi. And the king of Kashi had told his queens that morning, I'm going to cut off Krishna's head and I'm going to present it to you. So during the battle, Krishna, who of course, being omni um, omniscient, knew of this, he cut off after killing Pondraka, who attained Swarupya Mukti, because he was always meditating on Vishnu's form, Krishna cut off Kashiraj's head and threw it over the wall. And they didn't know what it was, you know, just a, a severed, bloodied head. Like, what is this? And, oh, it's a head. Oh, it must be Krishna's head. Because our king said he would, oh, no, it's, it's our king's head. And one of Kashiraj's sons, Sudakshina, became very angry and decided that Krishna was a murderer, which, of course, is not possible in a war. It, it's not in the category of murder, but he decided Krishna is a murderer and I'm going to get vengeance. So he goes to Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva says, you can do this yagya and you'll get a demon that will kill anyone you want as long as that person is not a brahmana or respectful to brahmanas. And Sudakshina thought, well, then I can kill Krishna. He's not a brahmana, he's a ksatriya or maybe he's a vaisha and he's certainly not respectful to the brahmanas because he allows the brahmanas to offer respects to him, and he accepts that. He doesn't complain. He doesn't, he doesn't say, no, 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 you can't offer respects to me. He said, so I'm sure that this will work against Krishna. Did it work against Krishna? No. But this was his, his thinking, uh, right? So this can be very confusing for people. And of course, here we have this, it's a juxtaposition between rasa and tattva, isn't it? Krishna is God, therefore all the devotees offer respects to him. This happens sometimes with Vasudeva and Devaki. Like Vasudeva and Devaki, after Krishna kills Kamsa, they start offering prayers and respects to Krishna and Balaram, and Krishna and Balaram say, stop it, we're your children. We're supposed to offer respects to you. Again, in, in America, we, this, this may not really compute very well. You know, like we, it says in the, in the Shastra that every morning, this is described with Krishna and Balaram, with Vasudeva and Devaki, that every morning Krishna and Balaram would get up and offer their respects to their parents. You know, this doesn't go on in American households. I, I didn't wake up in the morning as a child and touch my father's feet. You know, it just, it's not our, so again, it may not, we may not understand it, but even in a, in a country like America or Australia or Brazil, which, which tries to all places where it pretends that there's no uh, status, we are aware of status, and we do treat people differently according to status. So Krishna has this play where he's the subordinate, and he enjoys being subordinate to his devotees. He relishes this. Krishna doesn't always like being at the very top of the pyramid <laughs> where everybody's offering respects to him. You know, that, that is relishable. It is relishable to be the top of the top of the top and everybody's respecting you. But it's also relishable to not be like that. This is why very famous, very rich people often go out in disguise or sometimes go out in disguise and like work in a soup kitchen or something because it's, it's also relishable uh, to be subordinate. Huh? So the next interesting thing which relates to this, is Krishna the head of the Yadus or is he the affectionate cowherd? As the head of the Yadus, right, as the prince of the Yadus, uh, he's in this position of exatria, of the protector, and okay, you've got to go and kill all these demons. Of course, Krishna kills demons in Vrindavan as well to protect the devotees. But there it's more hidden, isn't it? 
Like the cowherd boys come home and they say, oh, there was this demon, he was like a crane, and Krishna split his beaks and he killed him. And Mother Yasoda is saying, I don't want you to go to the forest anymore, Krishna. Imagine sending your child off and your child come, imagine sending your child to school and they come home and tell you that there was a huge monster as big as the sky that they killed, you know. And so Krishna tells his mother, oh, the cowherd boys are just making this up. This is just stories. Right, like we have our, our little school, if the little children come home and say, Mommy, I killed a demon at school. And then the mommy would say, yes, yes, very nice, very nice, thinking it's just a story. But sometimes they would actually see. I mean, everyone in Vrindavan saw Kaliya. Of course, Krishna didn't kill him, but still everyone saw Kaliya. Everyone saw Putana. Right? So sometimes they would actually see that there were these Trinavarta, that there were these, these demons. But it would appear that Krishna didn't kill them. You know, oh, the trees didn't fall on Krishna because we're worshiping Narayana. Right? That, that's how it happened. And the coward boys are saying, no, 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 it was Krishna. Krish, Krishna kicked the cart. And there was this demon in the cart. How could this little baby Krishna kick it? No, no, this must be because every day we're worshiping Narayana. Whereas in Dwarka and Mathura, it's very open. Krishna is Kshatriya and he's going and killing the demons. There's, there's no, it's not something that's hidden. It's not something that's explained in another way. And so each group of devotees has their own mood. The devotees in Vrindavan have this mood that Krishna is just this, this cowherd boy. I mean, he's a prince. He's the son of Nanda, but he's a cowherd boy. And we're protecting Krishna. Like before Krishna goes in the forest, Mother Yasoda ties on a Nisinga Kavacha. And she's chanting different mantras, right? Like we put on tilak and chant. So they're putting tilak on Krishna and chanting different Vishnu mantras for his protection. So whereas in Mathura and Dwarka, the, the mood is different. And so therefore, the devotees like even Parikit, who's not a Vrindavan devotee, but still he may be upset. Oh, Narad is pulling Krishna away from Vrindavan. No, no, don't be upset. He's the best of the devotees. Or Narada knows the devotees may be upset. Right? Like, like uh, Vir Krishna Swami, he's devotees that pull him to other parts of the world, right? Devotees in Fiji, oh, we want to take him to Fiji, or devotees in Mexico, we want to take him to Mexico. And then the devotees here are sad. Oh, why is somebody pulling my Guru Dave to Mexico? Right? And then when he's in Mexico, the devotees here are saying, you have to come back, right? So somebody may be upset like that. Or, you know, if, you, if you're married to a person who has a job where they may be called at any time, right? Some, there are jobs like that, like you're an obstetrician. You may be called at any time of the day or night to deliver a baby. Or, you know, some people who work for the government and they may any time. And so the spouse is thinking, oh, why are they calling you? Why do you have to have your baby now at 2 in the morning and calling my husband out of the house? And why does it have to be a criminal at 2 in the morning calling my spouse out of the house? So the devotees in Vrindavan, they're like this. Why are you taking Krishna out of Vrindavan? Why are you taking Krishna out of Vrindavan? Why are you claiming that Krishna is your child? Why are you claiming that Krishna is part of your dynasty? And the devotees uh, in Dwarka, they're also complaining, why are you trying to take Krishna back to Vrindavan? Like we had this with the Rathiatra, where Lakshmi gets very upset. Right? We are talking about that the other day, that Lakshmi Devi comes with her Parivar, her, her associates, and they've got sticks and some kind of handcuffs, you know, and they're tying up the, the guards and they're, I mean, it was a drama. They're not actually beating them, but, they're, you know, they're beating them and tying them up. Why are you trying to take Krishna to Vrindavan? He belongs in Dwarka. This is his place. You know, th those were just, that was just a foster family. Prabhupada always calls you Soda Nandamarsh, foster parents. Right? You all know what foster parents are? They don't adopt the child. They take care of the child because the parents are in some difficulty. So they're temporarily taking care of the child while the parents... So, no, they're just the foster parents. That's just the foster family. He belongs here. So the different devotees have their different moods, and there's respect for that. Just like, you know, we were talking about the form of Jagannath. Right? You were talking, Rathiyatra, about the form of Jagannath. 
how Krishna and Balaram and Subhadra appeared in these forms because Rohini was talking about the pastimes of Vrindavan. Yes, but this is done very carefully. And even Arupa Goswami explains how in Dwarka they build this Nava Vrindavan. So Krishna won't want to go back actually to Vrindavan. Right? He can hang out in his garden, in his Nava Vrindavan. So there's this mood of respect. Each devotee respects. The other devotees have this mood. But interestingly enough, each group of devotees feels that the Lord is happiest here with me. We shouldn't think that the devotees want Krishna to come here and there because they want to enjoy him. You know, in this world, you know, when your spouse is called away to take care of some emergency at work, you're thinking, well, then I'm not going to enjoy them anymore. They're not going to be here with me for my enjoyment. But the devotees are not thinking like that. They're thinking, Krishna's not going to enjoy. If Krishna has to leave Vrindavan, how will he enjoy? How will he have his beautiful gardens and his Yamuna and his, his play and to be relaxed in his own home? And the Yadus are thinking, how will, how will Krishna enjoy in Vrindavan? It's so rural, it's so rustic. He deserves everything royal. Right? Like the residents of Vaikuntas explain the Briyad Bhagavatamrita. They think Vishnu is supreme. They think Krishna is a manifestation of Vishnu. They think this is where God can really be God. No, he goes there for some leela to kill some demons, but here he can actually be himself. He can be God. And the residents of Vrindavan, they think, here Krishna can actually be himself. He can actually relax. Right? So the mood is to want to serve the Lord rather than to want to be with the Lord. I mean, there is a liberation like that to always be in the presence of the Lord. But Lord Kapiladev says that the pure devotees, they're willing to give up these liberations for service. And we also see this with Narada. Narada is having this darshanotsava. He's having a festival of seeing Krishna. It's like we come uh, every day for a festival of seeing Krishna. We call it darshan, yes? We're coming to see Krishna, and Krishna is seeing us. And it's a big festival. We have the sign outside. Every day is a festival. And just seeing the Lord is a festival, isn't it? Isn't that a fact? Right? I have some uh, paintings in my room of Krishna, and even though they're, they're there all the time, and I see them every day, every time I look at them, I feel that it's a festival. Everyone has this? experience yeah and who wants to take their eyes off of the festival of krishna the gopis don't even want to blink they're cursing brahma why are you making us blink right and when krishna goes out of someone's vision they practically they, they practically fall apart you know krishna just leaves the village to go into the forest and the older residents are fainting, and Krishna leaves the forest to go into the village, and the trees all dry up. If I can't see Krishna. This is the, and it's such a wonderful description in Madhurya Kadambadi about when Krishna first appears to the devotees, and they, all their senses become like eyes to drink in the beauty of the Lord. And then all their senses become like a nose to smell the Lord. And all their senses become like ears to hear the Lord's voice. So who would leave? You see Krishna, why would you leave? You know, if you're really having fun at a festival, you don't want it to end, right? I remember in Detroit, we had a Gurukula and they had these, um, these uh, twins come from a not even a congregational family. It was a family from India who wanted their children to learn the culture. They weren't really even devotees uh, at, any, at any level. And I remember after the Greeting the Deities Guru Puja Kirtan, maybe two, three days in the school, one of the children came up to me and said, I never wanted it to end. And so when we're in a really wonderful festival, you, you don't want it to end. I mean... You, you, know, you may feel tired or something. Uh, so who would leave? Because Krishna says, leave. You have service to do. And that's higher. 
Uh, just like our Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he was in Vrindavan at the Radha Damodar Temple, right by Sevakun. Who would leave such a place? And many devotees even take a vow they won't leave. But for service, he left. Because as Guru Maharaj said, preach in English to English-speaking people. So he left. And he writes this poem. He says, I don't know why you brought me to this terrible place. When I had to work for a year at the local public school as part of my doctorate, I had that poem in my drawer and I would say it every day when I went to work. Why did you bring me to this terrible place? But you must have some service for me to do here, yes? So you have something for me to do here. If you want me to dance here, then make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. So this is the mood of the devotee. They would prefer to serve Krishna. Or there's this really, it's, it's a really funny purport when Lord Ramachandra sends out his brothers to do various service in various places. And Prabhupada says that the Lord didn't want his brothers just to enjoy sense gratification in his presence. I always thought that was very funny, poor report. But he wanted them to do service. So service for the Lord is a higher principle than the festival of seeing him. Actually, we have a godbrother called Bhavananda. And Bhava often means the material world. It has many, many, many meanings, but one is the material world. And Prabhupada once said to him, do you know what your ma- name means? He said, oh, it means the bliss of emotion, of bhav, of seeing. Prabhupada says, no. He says, it means the bliss of preaching in the material world. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, uh, it, it appears contradictory. There's darshanotsava, but yet one leaves. So we looked at various contradictions, that Krishna has the highest status, and yet sometimes... He's offering obeisances to his devotees. Sometimes the devotees are offering obeisances to him. Sometimes he's in the role of God. Sometimes he's in the role as if he's a ksatri or vaisha. That there's these different abodes with different moods and different devotees who are each wanting the Lord to come uh, to them. And each considers that they're offering uh, the highest and that the Lord is the most ecstatic to see and yet one will happily leave in order to do service. So if we have any questions, comments. Hmm. Yes. Here it's dull. Yeah, yeah, Americans, it's part of the American, like, mentality. Everybody's the same. There's no difference. But that doesn't actually work. It, it's, it's not. No, no, it didn't work for the communists. Yes, different levels of consciousness. That's a very good point. That growing up in Spain, you had an awareness of that, yeah.